Oh, <laughs> I was waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. Hello, this is Pastor Dean Pepin, and uh, I'm from Healing Hands of Jesus Ministries, and thank you very much for, uh, for coming today. We're talking about healing. You know, the, the, the funny thing about it is, uh, we're so, uh, you know, everyone is so suspicious uh, when they see a, a preacher on television. They're so suspicious. I don't blame them. Because some people have taken the whole thing about healing and um, they've tried to make money on the deal. They've tried to, uh, they've, they, they've over-dramatized it in some cases. Well, listen, you know, that doesn't take anything away from the truth of God. What the Bible says what the Bible says. And it, it says in 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you are healed. So, when I have people come to me who've got cancer, when I have people come to me who can't, they can't hear, they can't, they've got something drastically wrong and medicine can't help them, um, I do my best to share the truth with them because I want them healed. I want them healed. So, you know, naturally every minister uh, and every ministry uh, needs contributions, but that's not the purpose of the show. If you want to send this ministry money, you go right ahead. <laughs> I'll give you the address later, but that's not the purpose of this. We can use it. We can use the money, but because um, that's our only source of income. But uh, what's more here is if you've got a husband who's got cancer. If you've got cancer yourself, if you've you know you've got a malady that uh, medicine can't handle, this, this this is what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for, and I want you to listen very carefully. Yesterday we were talking about the fact that people blame earthquakes and tsunamis and and uh, everything else on God. Well, that's not true. God created you to live, not to die. He created paradise for you. Uh, now, when I look down, I'm looking at my notes, and I've got my Bible here today, too, my Holman Christian Standard Bible, which is the one I really, really love. I wasn't prepared yesterday, and the show kind of ended kind of quickly because I didn't realize what the time limit was on, uh, on this uh, network here. I, just to recap yesterday, I said people blame God for uh, storms and catastrophes and earthquakes. Everything that goes wrong, they blame God. We had an electrical storm here the other day, and they blamed God for the power going out. No. No. Mm -mm. My friend, laws of nature went into effect after Adam and Eve sinned. The reason we have weeds in the ground is not because God wanted the weeds in the ground, because the, the world is under a curse. We're living among cursed people. All the, all the people who do not profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they might be nice. I've got some neighbors next door. They are the nicest people you'd ever want to meet. But they're not saved. And the gospel is very simple. The Lord has made it very simple for everyone to get to heaven. All you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. Read the Bible and you can see he left his Bible so that everybody could see the truth. Now, if we choose not to do it, is that God's fault? No. Getting back to the subject. All of these natural laws, as we understand them, were set aside by Jesus now. Bear that in mind. All, of, all these natural laws were set aside by Jesus. When, so if, if, if he set aside the natural laws that were, went into effect because of the curse, that means he's fighting against the devil. That means he's not fighting against his father because we can't have a house divided. Now, all of these natural laws, as we understand them, were set aside by Jesus 
whenever necessary in order to bless humanity. You get the connection? But bear in mind that Jesus said in John 14, 9, let me look that up here, John 14, 9. I love the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Let me see what, what I'm looking for, John 14, 9. Bring a Bible when you come here, please. Please, please, please. 14, 9, Jesus said to him, Have I been among you all this time? He's talking to Philip at the Last Supper. Have, um, have I been among you all this time without your knowing me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me? That's verse 10. Well, folks, if you want to know what God is like, all you have to do is look at Jesus because he did whatever the Father told him to do. Now, would the Father send a storm that would jeopardize the life of the uh, apostles and Jesus and then Jesus turn around and say, peace, be still? That, that doesn't sound logical, right? You, I think you're getting the point. In fact, we're gonna. This is this is. I'm getting ahead of myself, like I promised I would not do. Well, we don't see Jesus bringing any storms on people, and we do not see Jesus in the Scripture um, putting sickness on people, even the ones he hated. Well, he didn't hate. He hated evil, but he did not hate people. Excuse me. I, I wish we could cut that out of the video. But I want to illustrate something here. A storm had risen on the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus was in the stern of the ship, asleep on a pillow. You know what? I honest to gosh, I can I can just picture Jesus. <laughs> I can just picture Jesus in the stern of the ship, <laughs> sleeping away. He was so tired, the poor guy. He was healing all day. He was praying all night. And he, he finally got some peace, and he was in this boat so that the apostles could leave him alone, and he fell asleep, and the storm comes. <laughs> so anyway, the disciples wake him up, and I could see Peter. I could see, I could see Peter grabbing him right by the, 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 the nap of the neck and say, Hey, wake up! We're in, a, we're in trouble here. Well... They were afraid they were going to die. Again, that's a story for another time. That was a lack of faith. Here they had Jesus Christ who had been preaching faith all day long in the boat with them, and they were afraid they were going to die. So they wake up Jesus, and they told him, they said, Listen, we really are afraid. Can't you do anything? Jesus gets up, and he says, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Well, when he rebuked the wind, he wasn't rebuking something God did. He was rebuking something the devil stirred up. By golly, the devil thought he had Jesus and the 12 apostles right where he wanted them. He stirred that storm up and he must have said to the demons that were accompanying him, man, this is one of the best opportunities I've ever had because right now what we're going to do is we're going to kill Jesus and get him out of the way and plus we're going to kill everyone he's been teaching, those 12 apostles, so we can get this whole redemption business and this whole God business out of the way. That's what the devil wanted to do. It wasn't God. I love talking about the Bible. You see, Adam, Adam who was originally the God of this world, small g, small g, 
Let's put it this way. God made paradise for man. Okay, let me get nice and close to the camera. I gotta get this, I gotta get this point across. God made paradise for man, and 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 paradise was perfect. You and I were supposed to live in a perfect garden. You and I were supposed to live forever. We weren't supposed to have loose skin like this and gray hair like this because this is a sign of the body decaying. No, we were supposed to live forever. When did we start dying? When Adam disobeyed God. When Adam disobeyed God, that's when all the trouble began. Now, he was the God of this world. He was supposed to take dominion over this world. Let's put it this way. If I gave you, if I gave you the keys to my car, and I said, Joe, this is your car. You can run this car until the wheels fall off. But this is your car. I'm giving it to you. I have no use for it anymore, and I love you, and I'm giving it to you because I want you to have transportation. I'm going to be going away for a while, and I want you to have this beautiful car. I took good care of it. I take off, give you the car. And then I come back a couple of months later, and I find out, I go to you and I say, Hey, Joe, where's the car that I gave you? Well, you know who I gave it to? I gave it to Charlie. You gave it to Charlie? What did you give it to Charlie for? I can't stand Charlie. Charlie is my worst enemy. By golly, I should never have given you the car. Well, I can't ask for the car back, can I? I gave it to Joe. And it was Joe's car to do with whatever he wanted to do. That's what happened with Adam. He was the God of this world, and when God's back was turned, when God's back was turned, he sinned and he gave the keys to Satan. And Satan is the God of this world. We live in an evil world. We're perfect people. We're saints. We are citizens of heaven. But we live in a world that's imperfect. But still living under the curse. And that's why God gave us power, so that we could put the devil under our feet. And Jesus was demonstrating that in the boat that day. He said, you of little faith, no, peace, be still. See, Adam committed high treason. And he sold out to the devil. And the Bible tells us that now Satan is the god of this world. Want me to prove it for you? 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, and then i got to close with this because 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Quickly, i got to go. I've got to go, I've got to go. For we are not, excuse me, the god of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. I'll be talking more about that tomorrow. Listen. Join me on Midnight Miracle Hour tonight at 12 o'clock. Just Google Midnight Miracle Hour. Join me on Spreaker.com Pep Talk. I give lessons, Bible lessons every single day of the week. I've got to run because we're almost at the end of the time. I'm going to be back tomorrow for another 15 minutes. Please join me. In the meantime, you know what? I'm going back to sleep.